Berlin Art. Okay, cool. Um, how's it, everyone? I hope uh, lunch was good. Everyone enjoy lunch? Awesome. That's really good. Cool. So for the next session, uh, we have Anjan LaRue. She's going to be doing the formula for getting new clients, onboarding them, and delivering an awesome website project to them. Um, I think it's going to be a really good talk. I think she has good processes in place from what I know. So yeah, really en enjoy it. Cool. Thank you. Hello. Okay, cool. Can you just tell me if I have to stand close so because it's going to be a bit weird. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to um, say a little bit about what this is about. So for in case you're, because it was really hard finding a nice title, but the, the main thing is, is the way um, you run your project, especially website projects, but it doesn't necessarily have to be website projects. There's also any, any type of project where you, uh, continuously need to get um, information from your clients, so copywriting, design, uh, marketing, anything like that um, can be run like this. Um, the idea behind the workshop is that you create your own processes, so it's not, not necessary to follow mine, but I will show you mine to get some ideas and things like that. Oh yeah, sorry, I always forget this. <laughs> Give me a second. really work without this thing so let me just okay. 
Okay, I have to add, I actually had a presentation emergency where I didn't get the presentation done properly. So there are some slides missing and this might actually disappear halfway through and then we'll just move to the undesigned slides. So, okay, so about me, there's my Twitter handle, my Facebook page. I'm the, um, well, the lead developer and uh, owner of Simply Digital Design, which is a small uh, website company and also we do also do digital marketing as well. I have about four or five people working for me, but it's mostly from overseas, uh, mostly like outsourced stuff. So the whole idea behind the whole systems creation was I created it in a way that I can uh, make it easier to outsource. Okay, so, um, okay, who am I and the why? So I'm, I'm moving slowly. Um, I always think why, the why behind something is really important. I don't have a, like, a amazing why. Um, my main things for creating um, this is um, I've got um, three kids and I like to travel. So I actually want to do the whole uh, digital nomad thing, but with three kids it's really hard. So I had to create processes um, to, to um, aim for that one day to make that all happen. And the other thing is also I am actually really shy and struggle to um, talk to clients sometimes. So with these processes, it makes it a lot easier for me to, because I know it's in place. I don't have to, you know, be authoritative and demand stuff. It's all, they know from the start what I need. And before they even start to work with me, they know what I, what I want. Okay, so this is just an overflow. I know it's not very clear, but I'll go into more detail of my critical client flow. So the critical client flow is what m happens most of the time. So it starts with the traffic bit, which is the um, whatever it is, SEO or Facebook ads. Most of the time, it's these blue ones. It's um, I've got uh, two sales reps and I, and then also referrals. Referrals is most of the time. So um, what then happens, they either download something from my website and then gets into an automated, like an automated series, which actually are, give them the intro packet, which we will talk about later. And then also a series of emails, basically telling them about the company and inviting them to fill in my website worksheet. I, I don't really work with anyone if they don't fill in my website worksheet. So and it's actually a very, it's a long one, so not a lot of people do that. So, uh, but I didn't start off that way, so that's a, another important thing to remember. Some of the steps you would not do when you start out, because you might, like when I started out and I knew about the website worksheet, I would actually tell people about that, but then I will, I will go and meet them and we, went, we will go through it together. Okay, and then from there, we either decide, um, depending, on, depending on the website worksheet, I then actually score them. I've got a scorecard, which I would, will also show you when we go into the practical bit. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> and then uh, from there, from the score, I would invite them to, for a discovery session. So the discovery session is usually just a short session, um, uh, what, which we call a go wide, go deep. So a lot of the things that I talk about is from um, being part of a, a group or a mastermind called WP Elevation. So you, some of you might have heard of them. It's called the, the Blueprint. And it's also, I, I don't do everything um, like them. Some of the things I found doesn't work for South African audiences that well. So I do, I've got a little bit of a deviation and I will also give you at the end all the resources of the different, you know, where I've learned all the different things that I do. Okay, so I score them, they get invited to a discovery session, and then we go, we call it go wide, go deep, where we uncover everything they really need. So, and that's just, just, it doesn't need to be very technical, it just needs to be enough so that I can give a proposal. So then it's the proposal, and then after that, it is the, um, what we call anti-follow-up. And um, the anti-follow-up is a way of following up without actually you know, asking them, are you gonna work with me? It's mostly giving value, like value emails. And I will actually show you that uh, anti-follow-up in my email um, automation in um, Active Campaign. Okay, yeah. Okay, so basically, um, so I've this, this is what's supposed to be just be an over, <laughs> I went actually a 
got, went too deep, but um, it's about, supposed to be just an overview. Um, but the idea behind this whole thing about all the promise with this workshop is that it's about giving your clients a better experience working with you while saving you a lot of time. So if it's things that you know you always do, it's say, if you automate it or you know you've got like a step-by-step -step thing of doing it, it saves you a lot of time and you also look better and um, yeah, the whole thing just becomes a better experience. Okay, so what is, what's usually the problem? So the problem is that a lot of times it's like reinventing the wheel each time you get a new client. So um, like, okay, so these things are, have you ever had one, any of these, like the client took too long to get content to me for the project or um, you never have the information when you need it or offboarding took too long, um, you, you know, when it came to offboarding you had to make changes forever. And then the last one, um, two weeks into the project, you realize that the, you don't own their domain, so you don't have the details. Okay, so why do we need a client process, besides everything that I've said already? It's, it creates a process, and then you can try and automate it. So you can, by knowing what the process is, you can uh, identify which parts you can actually automate, and you know, so that you don't need to spend any time on it. It, um, it makes you feel and behave like you've done it a million times, so it makes you look like a pro, and um, your client feels comfortable and you know everything's good. <laughs> and it saves you time, obviously. Um, it gives your client a better experience, and um, you can be more personal. So what, what I mean by that bit is that um, when you have a lot of, a lot of project going on um, at the same time, um, sometimes you, you, do, you know you'll just send out like the the templated e or like a templated email, but if you have this processes, you can actually just have a template, but make it make it more personal. Okay. okay. So I did talk about the critical client flow, but the three most important things from that flow that I am going to talk about today is the incoming bit. So in the incoming bit is um, getting the new client. Um, up until where they sign the proposal and you you send out the invoice. Then onboarding is um, how you set up the project or how you get them, um, you know, that, that very first bit before development starts. And then finally, offboarding is say, saying goodbye. Now in my, my case, I really say goodbye. It's just changing. So um, the, the way you actually convert them into a, a long-term client or recurring client. Okay, so the, and I'm just, okay, I should have actually this slide, so part of the whole slide thingy, this must be at the end, but let's talk about it now. So this is just the different tools that you can use. Um, I'd never think that you have to get stuck on tools, so this is just some of the tools that the first ones, mostly the ones I use, and then um, some ideas about other things. So for CRM, so that's either the bit where you get them on, like, um, saying that it's a lead and stuff like that, or the email um, behind the whole thing. I use Active Campaign, but you can also use uh, HubSpot or MailChimp. Um, then the proposal software, um, I use Better Proposals. There's also Proposify and BitSketch. Then invoicing software, I just use Wave, but you can ha use Plutio, you can use Zero or Sage. Um, then for systems, I use Systems Hub. I'll show you a little bit about that. There's also Process Street. So a lot of these things aren't necessary when you start out. So especially like the substance, the systems one, you can do that in Evernote when you start out. Then uh, project man management. Um, I now starting to decide between Plutio and Asana. I used to do, t I used to use Teamwork, and then there's also Basecamp and Freedcamp. Okay, then for questionnaires and sign-offs, you can use Gravity Forms, e-signature, and Hello Documents. Then the client portal. So I'm gonna uh, um, uh, just show of hands who actually downloaded the client portal files. Okay, so there are a few. I'll go through it. I actually, I also have it on here, but it's it's not. It's just I thought it would be like an, a fun thing to do to set up that client portal because it's something I wrote, I, I created the plugin and then yeah, it's it's just an easy. But I'll show you. Okay, so there's also L Laura Elizabeth created a really cool plugin for client portal stuff. Um, 
Who is this way? Hmm. Um, I'm going to try, like I said, I don't even know how long it's going to be up, but I will have some way of yeah, giving you the slides, especially the tools and, and the resources. I'll definitely have that, even if I just write, write some blog posts or something. Okay, and then, yeah, like I said, mine, or you can create your own client portal because that can just be a page on a website. And then for client feedback, um, so the client feedback is just specifically on development or on design. There is Envision app that you can use, uh, which have space for comments. Project Huddle is a very cool one. It's a plugin that you can use on your site. And yeah, you can just use yeah, plugins on your site as well. And then for automation, Zapier. Ah, sorry, I'll go back. I think we're gonna have time, so I, if I must slow down, just tell me. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail at, into the different things. It's actually going to be, be more um, useful once I go into the systems and show you how it's done. But for incoming, um, so this is the, just getting a new client. So like I said, it doesn't matter where the, your client comes from. Um, it will, so it, any, it can be like a, a social media uh, or any and source, <laughs> and then it, they will either land on your, la your landing page or a lead magnet, or they will fill in your contact form uh, or a hire me form. I say a hire me form because a contact form should never just be, you know, like a normal contact form. It should always ask for a little bit more detail, even if it's just the type of project and, um, if you can, the budget. Okay, so in my case, I always send, send them an intro packet, and that's Part of what we're going to go through in the um, workbook is how to create these in intro packets, and I'll sh also show you. Then, like I said, the intro packet goes to the website worksheet, then the client scorecard, and then we request a meeting and send them to a calendar link or send them a uh, referral. No, okay. What they, that means is I'd never just tell them I'm not going to go, I'm not going to work with them. If they don't um, do well in my client scorecard, I will always refer them to someone else. And then it's, a it's either a discovery session or a discovery workshop. So by, what I mean by that is sometimes clients, um, you know from the start that they don't have the information. You will need to do a proper discovery workshop and that would be a paid workshop. So a lot of the clients that I work with actually request a paid workshop before they and go further because they get something tangible that they then can take to someone else if they want to as well. Then it's proposal and then the anti-follow-up like I told you and that I'm going to show you and then you get your con contract signed and your invoice paid. So that's the incoming bit. So maybe at this point if there's any questions but I don't think there should be because I, I will show you more. <laughs> okay so the next step is the the onboarding and this is once the contract is signed, um, getting them, welcoming them, welcoming them on. Okay, so we either s start with a kickoff meeting or a discovery workshop. So if we did a discovery workshop before the proposal, we, we will only do like a kickoff meeting. If we haven't done a, um, a discovery, or if we haven't done the workshop there, then after the first payment, they will do the discovery workshop. A discovery workshop is, is more intense. It's about two to three hours. So, and we go into a lot of details on what, what their goals is, and we do the design. Actually, oh, I, they're so fun, so I brought them with. I've got these, it's like UI um, cards, and you can actually lay them out, and the whole workshop is really fun, and then you take photos and stuff. And then, um, okay, so that's the discovery workshop. Then, uh, I'm lost now. <laughs> um, you, okay, then as, uh, once the, the project is starting, there's a welcome packet. So the welcome packet is, again, something that I can, I'm going to show you and we're going to go through in the, in the workshop. But um, it's just basically, again, and this is, this is really important, all the information they need to know. So anything that, like, um, the times you're open. If there's something like, I don't work Friday afternoons. So I put that in the, uh, in the workshop. Oh. In the, in the welcome packet, and they know that if they if they agree to or in, in the intro packet already. Same with um, the way I want to be 
communicated to. So I, I want them to send an email to support maybe or whatever. It doesn't matter what the reasons or the things are as long as you put that in the welcome packet, like things that's really set, as well as the process of how you work. Maybe this whole process that you can explain to them. Okay, and then the feedback review and sign up procedures. It's just a video explaining to them how to give feedback because sometimes clients doesn't know how to, to give feedback. So just helping them out, telling them be more specific or, um, um, and then also the sign off procedures is just explaining to them at this stage, we're gonna have like a, a form where you, you need to sign because sometimes clients think it's, a, it's overhead if you don't tell them in the beginning about that. Then, okay, um, the client portal, like I said, the client portal is just a page. It's one page per client with all the information. So in my case, I just created that portal. All, the, all it does is create a private page on your site per client. So it uses the username of the client, creates a page, and then I have a, in Beaver Builder, because that, that's a builder, but you can do, you, you, you can create whatever you want on that page. So I've got a template as well that we're going to do those at once. Um, it's just basically things like a link to the invoicing, a link to the files, link to the staging site, um, and then also the things that, that stays the same for, for all clients, like the welcome video and um, link to your calendar and things like that. Okay, so checklists and questionnaires. So that's just the first step, S sending them all the, the what, they, what you need, all the requirements, so just deciding on what that is for your specific project. Then, um, so depending on the project management software you use, you can actually copy a template of your project. So if you, you know, you've got the step-by-step -step of the delivering bit of your project, you just copy that and for each client and then send them a project management video. That is if you want them to be part of the project management. Sometimes you don't, you don't have to. I don't do it for all clients. So just clients, maybe like a really big project, you just just explaining to them the specific software, if it's a SANA or team work. And then last thing is just the f um, setting up prog progress meetings. So it's a really good idea to, at the start, tell them, okay, every two weeks on a Monday at 10 o'clock, we have a progress call or, or something like that. So it's just a quick 10 minute phone call. Just if, they, if you know that it's for someone like me, if I don't really like that call, but I know it's there and I know, okay, I have to tell them, this is what we need, this is, what, then it's a lot easier. Okay, and then the final, okay, so, so I'm skipping the whole delivering of the project. The final thing is the offboarding, and this is just the way of saying goodbye or changing the service. So changing it to be a care plan client or, um, yeah, anything like that, or well, marketing SEO, it just depends on what, what your next step is. So um, what's missing from the slide is that if the first is the launch checklist. So you do it just before launch, you have like a checklist, I'll show you mine. Um, then there's a, usually an offboarding checklist, just ensuring you've got everything that you want to give them, depending on what kind of, um, you know, how, if they're gonna move on on their own or if there's gonna be anything you're still gonna do, then training. Then I also have like a, a 30 day, 60 day, 90 day follow up. Um, I think I've, yeah, I have the emails in there so I'll show you. Um, it's, it's just having that email, so you can actually schedule those. So you t just tag the client when the project is done and automatically get 30, 60 and 90 days, they will get an email. Now the 30 day usually, because I give a 30 day uh, support period. So the 30 day one will be, are you happy? Are you sure you don't wanna go on a care plan? Remember that, that all backups will end now. You're gonna have to back up yourself because that's usually, you know, help them think, okay, no, 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 I should actually go onto a care plan. And then the 60 day, I think it's, um, if I remember correctly, it's, it, that one, so one of them is the referral request, which is the bottom. Now the referral, re I think that's a 90 day. In this case, I call it, we call it an anti-referral request because you don't actually ask for a referral. You, you ask them who do they need for them. So you actually offer to refer someone to them. And because of what that word, I can't, <laughs> sorry, I can't speak English today, but in any case, they then offer to give you someone as well. And then also the upsell, like I said, 
And then what's also missing is feedback re requests. So what usually happens is, I think that's the 60 day one. So you ask, um, you don't ask for a testimonial, you just ask for feedback. So you've got like a form, a feed feedback form for them to fill in. And then you ask them on, in the next email, you ask them, would you mind me using part of this as a testimonial? Okay, so that makes it just a little bit easier. Okay, so this is just, uh, like I said, because this is just the, the speaking part. So what's the main things that you need to do from here or take away from here is that you need to figure out what your clients needs for the project to be, okay, what do your clients need for the project to be a success? So you go and you write down what, what your clients need and then you figure out what you need to make the project a success. So what information do you need from the client and then you draw out the full client experience. So from the start, what you know, every little bit, what you would need. And then um, the final thing, and this is just later on, automate what you can. Okay, so, and what's, oh, so let me just have a little bit. Talking too fast. Okay, so the don'ts, what you shouldn't do is that you, don't, you should never try and reinvent the process for each client. And I'm so guilty. I, I have my process. I've, you know, it's written down. I'll show you. It's very nice. But every time I think, no, but this client really doesn't like emails. I must, I mustn't, for this one, we mustn't do this. Or for this client, I shouldn't, and you should never do that. Just st stick with it. Because what happens is, if you don't stick with the process, you, you'll confuse yourself and the team. Because then you you think you actually did send them that that document and you never did. And then also, especially when you're starting out, don't overcomplicate things. Don't do all that I said, if, it's your, if, if you're in the beginning, don't do it. It's just figure out what's the main things that you need from your client and get, get that. And then don't get hung up on the tools. Like I said before, um, it is, it, it does get important, the tools does get important later on when you try to automate because it is beneficial if, you, if the tools talk to each other and it's all nicely integrated, but it, that should not be a reason for you not to create processes. And then um, the last one, don't try to automate too soon. One, if you don't have your processes in place manually, don't, don't automate it. Okay, so the next step, so some of these are the ones that we're actually going to, to go through. Um, so do the do's, like I said, figure out that whole process, draw your clients, um, your, the client experience, then document your system in some way. It can be something like Systems Hub or it can just be Evernote, anything. And then um, okay, have a look at the resources. I will show you the resources on, it's one of the things I'm not on the slides, so I'll just show it to you on the other slides. And then your packets, so create your packets. So that's the um, workbook that we will go through, so I will show, well, you can do it. And then um, create your client portal if you want to, and then the email automation. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna show the email automation, I'm gonna do the client portal with you, and yeah, I think that's basically what we have on here. So let me get out of here. Is there anyone that still needs the file, or either, only, uh, Maybe just the workbook, if you want the workbook or anything, just get it from here. Okay, so, okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you, let me go in here. I don't know if it's gonna work with this resolution, but let's just see. Okay, so this is, uh, Systems Hub. like the resolution <laughs> might not work we'll see. 
So Assistance Hub is a, a site, especially if you've got like a big team, it's really nice because it's, it keeps all your processes and um, your, um, you can have like a, like you see over here, you can have training documents, you can have policies. Um, so it's a, it's a nice hub, but it doesn't want to work in this resolution. So I don't know, actually know what. Okay, so you've got now these in my case is di different departments. So I've got the marketing department, the sales, that they're the main and the delivery is the main ones. So I've got the incoming under marketing. It So you can see, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I, I just want to give you some, some kind of idea of what I've been talking about. So this is the system set out. It says automatically sent so that no matter how the client gets to you in the first place, you automatically sends the intro packet. And um, okay, let me just maybe show you what I mean by the intro packet. I just have a, it's like a PDF document and it's uh, got like, like a little intro, it's got my office hours, what you're getting. Um, so this is, yeah, this is just explaining a little bit about my offerings. I've got like a website and a week offering and then also the custom website, um, what we're going to need. So from the start, before even working with me, they know they need um, inspiration board, they need, um, they need to answer some questions, explaining how we work, and then we've got a little bit of a, a process timeline. So immediately clients see, if, you know, if they want to, except if they want to go with the website in a week thing, um, if they want, just want like a, you know, a custom site, but they want it in, in a month, it's not gonna happen. This is the process. And again, if this is not, if that's not how you, you don't want to do that, you don't want to put clients off if you, invite as much clients as possible, then then leave that bit out. But in my case, I, w I don't want to later have to explain these kind of things. Okay, so yeah, I've got my discovery, I've got design, development, and then launch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I explain payment schedule, and then the next steps. And in the next steps, one of the main things is that I invite them to go fill in the website worksheet. So let me show you that. Ah, okay. So I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because it's in steps, but basically it's it's got four pages, just asking as much as, you know, as much information as that you want, but m one of the main thing is that I have this budget thing over here so that immediately they can see, you know, if, if it's, you know, if they want to work with me, and I can also decide if I want to work with them. Okay, I'm just going to go back to that system stuff. So yeah, so I've sent the inter packet, and then I asked them to um, uh, to fill in the website worksheet. I've got an email automation that actually, if they haven't uh, filled in the website worksheet, I remind them once. I think yeah, I remind them twice about it. And then, um, yeah, if they, if by that time they haven't filled in the website worksheet, I don't, I don't f uh, follow up at all. Um, I then have the client scorecard, which is not open. Let me. Show you what it looks like. 
is, 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 do you want me to show you all the things? Is it, is it helpful? <laughs> okay, cool. So, just do this. So I've got budget and I give them a score. Uh, the project, is it the kind of project that you, that I want to be part of, the team want to be part of? Is it a great portfolio piece? Respect. Respect is how well did they follow the process so far? Did they do the worksheet? Did they phone you 20 times already? Um, and then final score, you, and it depends. You know, sometimes I'll only take, like high school, sometimes when there's no, there's no work, <laughs> it's very slow, then I'll, I might take any of the other ones, it just depends. So that's, just depends. Mostly won't take a, a project in the bottom category, I would then refer it to someone else and warn them. <laughs> cool, and then, okay, so that's the client school cut. So I've got templates, just email them, maybe just show them, especially the addressing the budget one is quite a nice one. So I do have, a, if everything is very nice but they, their budget is too low, I would actually sh um, send them this one. Guys can see. Basically, I never, I, I use it as a template and then I, I always change it. So I, I try not to, you know, have it too templated, but um, especially because some of those dollar signs and things there. So um, I just tell them like, listen, this, uh, the, uh, this project's not gonna work for that price. Okay, and then finally, if, if it's a yes, then I, like I said, I request the discovery session. Cool, and then we move on. So, th so this is my whole incoming process. The sales, pr under sales is the onboarding. I'll show you a few things there. So positioning is the, um, the discovery session. So I prepare, got the pre-proposal questions and um, got an agenda, maybe I can show you that. I think I did. So just a checklist with a meeting agenda is just definitely something that you can change. It's just reminding me to go wide and go deep. Um, and by go wide, and, go wide and go deep means that you ask them what's the most important thing and then when they tell you, you keep on asking them why. So the why is the going deeper. And it can be very uncomfortable, so there can be a stage where, where you know, there's like these awkward signs. But then the, a lot of time you'll find out things that they wouldn't necessarily have told you in a discovery session. Cool. Let's just go back. Okay, so that's, yeah, so I'm, I think that's about it that I wanted to show in the, the positioning and then the proposal. I think I've got both in here, proposal and anti follow up. I get nervous and then I click too much, sorry. <laughs> okay, so this one is just I use better proposals. It's it's a really um, it makes it really easy to create proposals. Um, it's got like the WPE template inside, and you can just reuse it. So it's just it makes it just makes it a little bit more, um, especially if you just a, if you're a freelancer or a small company, it just makes it a little bit more legit, and and it, it can be really nicely designed. So um, there's also email templates over here. So. That's just ma one of the main things for me is having these email templates. Like I said, I don't always just use it as is, but just having that start that I don't have to go and set, okay. And I actually, I, don't, I should rather not show it, but I've started to um, create it in Afrikaans as well in my Outlook. So just to have like a little snippet in Afrikaans because sometimes, you know, I, I do have Afrikaans clients that expect me to speak Afrikaans. Okay, so, and then this anti-follow-up, like I said, it's a way of following up uh, after you've sent the proposal without sounding desperate. So it's usually, um, and I, maybe I should just show you now while we're talking about it. Very 
over today. <laughs> okay, so this is it. So this is just, I don't, if you know automations, especially in active campaign, but this is just a way to, to make it automated. So um, I, I would add, this is the wrong one, sorry. This is number two, so I'm just gonna go back to number one. So um, you tag them, so that, that's a manual process, um, tagging them. Um, you can do that through Zapier as well, just depending on your CRM system or if you're using the CRM system in active campaign as well. As, yeah, then you can just, tag, then there is ways to do it. But otherwise, I, I usually just tag them um, that I have sent a proposal, now they're in the anti-follow-up phase. So wait for three days. And then um, always check if it's a, um, no, uh, not weekend, so if it's a weekday. And then the first thing is the, uh, my process. Let me just maybe, I've got it here. So it's just the explaining again. So it, this process was already in um, my intro packet, but just a nicer way. So I've got like a thing that <laughs> was created in Canva and let me just, I think it's here, come on. Okay, so it, it just shows the process more visually. So basically, the, um, so the bottom one is the like uh, with dev process that I'll send in that anti-follow up. The top one is the one that I actually, that I send them once we are actually working together and I give them the actual time. So there I'll put in the dates, the actual dates. So this is that, just that one. So that's the process. And then the other emails are all just value add. So something about search engines or, and then the final of the three would be, um, are you ready? So that's a little bit of a, 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 a follow up. Usually in this email, I would say something like um, the calendar is getting full, or you know, if you want to jump in, it's a good time, something like that. Okay, and then there's um, we tag it, tag them, and then by that time, they either they mostly have signed the proposal, or they um, or not, or they said no. But then if not by that time, there's also a part two to this automation. Okay, so it gets tagged, next three, okay, wait for three days, and then send the, again, just three value, value add emails. Oh yes, I didn't show at the last one. We actually have a, a notify where it notifies me or one of, or a member of the team, um, so that it's at that stage. So then at that time you can decide, do you actually wanna send the, the Got that official follow-up email. So because by that time they might have s signed, the other emails doesn't matter because it's just value adds. But you don't want to, you know, ask them will they sign if they've already signed. So that's why that notifies there. Okay, so that's basically the the follow-up up until so when they sign the proposal, and then the last bit, well, well the delivery bit, or the onboarding. So there's a, an onboarding, let me just check what I have and do what makes them different, <laughs> forgotten. Okay, so yeah, this is just the invoice up until um, getting the deposit paid and then um, the onboarding checklist got more of the things like creating a client portal, creating the um, template, like the things that I've already discussed. I think this, yeah, this is good for the systems. For systems, the next thing that I wanted to do, okay, that workbook, sorry, I'm a little bit. So if you open the workbook, this one. This 
so this is just making it easier to um, to create those first that wel the welcome packets, and then the first bit is just to, um, like I said, write down every step you you took and can remember in your last client project from start to finish. So this is just making it easier to um, to create that whole process. Do you want Do you want me to give you some time to do that? Do one people or you not? Okay, I'm gonna do it now. <laughs> So you can just do it at home. So the intro packets are, um, like, I, like I said, what we send in the, before they've even worked with you. And these are so, just some things that you can add to that. So you write down what's included in your services, um, explain to clients how your projects work, or draw a diagram, uh, write down what you need from clients and by when. So this, is, this one's really important just to Remind yourself, what do you actually need and when in the process do you need it? Again, then any other details that you want your clients to know. So if there's anything specific about you that you don't work on Mondays or you don't do, or your, like I said, cancellation policy, payment details, um, write that down and include that in the intro packet. Then the same for the on onboarding, onboarding clients, the welcome packet. So, um, Explain what happened, the first steps to the client, explains what happened, what's the kickoff pro process, um, is there questionnaires and where can they find it. Um, explain to them how they can communicate with you, that you, you should have already did that in the, in the intro packet, but you can do that here as well, just reminding them how to communicate. Okay, and then also, like I said, if you use them or if you want them to be part of the project, if you're inviting them to the project management system, then give them a video um, how to, on how to do it because not all a lot of clients would not just know how to use it. Okay, and there's that. And then, the, like I said, the feedback process, how do you want them to give feedback? If it's in Project Huddle or um, in Vision App, just explain that to your client. And then any other FAQs. And then the final one is the offboarding one, and that's actually one that I haven't really um, done properly yet, and it's a very important one. So it's just like things like what login details that you need to give them, um, what do they need uh, to know when the project is complete? Uh, anything that you know they need to know about other services that you offer? And then what other questions do you often need to answer at the end of the project? So it's just, these questions is just to make it easier for, to go and sit and um, create your own um, you know, packets to send them. Cool, so you can have a look at that um, you can download it or you can just get it from me or yeah, but it's, it is on the file of inside the Dropbox folder. Just have a look at that. I think it's gonna be really hard explaining the the client portal bit, but let's try. So the, yeah, the people that did the um, offline or did um, do the homework and did the uh, preparation, I'll quickly show you this bit. Okay, so I've got a, a site, uh, it's called Clients, it's a client subdomain and it's got, um, it's called Client Portal. So this is just uh, the subdomain on my site and I'd use it solely for the purpose of having these um, client uh, portal, you know, type of, of client pages type of things. So I don't, I'm not gonna do it with you <laughs> because you didn't. <laughs> so I'm just gonna quickly show what I've done.
that's just local. So. Okay, so I've got this plugin and I, it's in the folder. So if you are interested, go and download it. I, I created it. All it does is it creates a, a, like a private page for each user. So once you set it up, you can go, it's got uh, under users, you've got client portal settings. And the only thing I, I changed was this portal. I called it portal. I think they called it private, or I called it private pages in the first time. But um, then what you need to do is uh, generate pages. So if, it's, if you want to create a page for your admin, then you can click that. Otherwise, it will automatically, as you create a new user, it will create private pages for them. Then you can um, add the messages if you want. I don't usually. And then if you go to your users, you'll find So you have this one, and you, you've, you've got this private page, oh, private page over here. So let's just do that one, because that's the, I think it's still the templated one, yeah. And then um, the other thing that I included in that folder is the template for this layout. So it's a Beaver Builder, it's a Beaver Builder template. So it's just a layout that you can reuse over and over again. Okay, so it's got, so this is Beaver Builder. So if you do use Beaver Builder, I did include it in the folder as well because I was planning for us to go through it, but this is, the setup isn't that well for that. So it basically, it starts, let me just go out here. Beaver Builder is a very easy builder to do these type of things with. So um, I've got a, the first bit is just like a welcome, so this stays the same. So you can change out the logo, to make it the client's logo, and then keep that the same. Um, maybe put in a video, a welcome video. That's the one thing that I still want to do. Then things like availability, and then your services. So the, oh, that you can change everything out. So this bit is, um, things that stays the same. So uh, maybe the project checklist, so each project's got the same checklist, um, the link to the meeting on the calendar, uh, then these are the sign-off pages. So these are just uh, a link to getting the, the different stages signed off. That's more part of the delivery, that's why I didn't talk about it. Um, and then we've got, these will be client-specific pages and you can edit it as, as you want. All you really need to do is, you know, change the link. So um, let me show you. If you do use Beaver Builder, you can just change the content over here and then add a link to it. So that'll be the brief or the inspire. But you, you, when you, once you've used this template, you can do whatever you want with it. You can just change it to the, the process that you, you use. So the first bit is the discovery, and what I do is once it's, um, once it's linked, then you change the color. Otherwise you leave it gray, but it doesn't matter. So leave that gray, and then at the bottom is more, also more things specific to them, so like, like the proposal will be their proposal, the invoice, their invoices, um, staging website, and what I've started to do is to, uh, I'll have feedback at the bottom, uh, at the bottom, at the top, and I would link to the project, um, project management tool as well. Okay, so this is basically the, the portal. Um, let me think if there's anything specifically that I wanted to show you.
something. I just wanted to either if you import the template, so you can just go to the it's you it's just the normal tools. It's just the normal import, and then the, it's, I just use the WordPress import. I think you can, you can import through Beaverbuilder as well, but I just usually use the normal WordPress in, importer, and then you can import the template, and then uh, it's available here in Builder templates. And then you can just reuse that um, client portal page layout. So it becomes really easy to create these kind of portal pages just because once it's set up, it's set up, it automatically crea creates that private page for you and all you need, need to do is use the template. But again, you can do whatever you want. If you've got already got a theme that works with that, then you can just do that. Okay. I think actually I jumped through a lot of the things. So I just want to show you the resources, which is still in the undesigned thing. Where's this Zoom thing? So these are my main uh, resources or things. So I, from all these different things, I created a process that works for me. So like I said, WP Elevation is um, the big uh, mastermind that is an affiliate link. Um, but if, well, if you use it, I always give, we g have like a little workshop together or something. So if in, at any time you do want to uh, join WP Elevation, come speak to me. If you're interested in WP Elevation at all, come, there's like, they've got like this free credit thing where you, where the, um, when you start, you get like a, I think it's a $197 course, just to, you can choose which one. So just to get a taste of, um, a taste of them. Then an, a, a girl called Erin Flynn, she, she actually started, uh, well, this is where I learned all about these packages. She's got like a really nice workshops on creating these different packages for people. Then um, the Freelance to Freedom Project, um, she's got a course, Stress Less and Impress. So it's all, it's all about um, how to set up things. I used a little bit, you know, especially she, the, the automation bit, I, um, it's really good. Then Laura Elizabeth got the cli proper client portal. She's got like a really nice plugin, um, but it's, I think it's $197. That's why I created mine. And um, there's the last one, uh, um, Christine Marie. She's very good with getting content from clients. She's mostly a designer, but, um, oh yeah, and th that link also got a lot of design resources about getting things, um, you know, planning for design and also getting content for design. So I think that's mostly it. Yeah, this was. Okay, so any questions on any of the, these processes or um, systems? Yeah, I, I did, okay, so I started off with the WP Elevation being there, like the, the blueprint was there, so I knew I, what I was supposed to do. Um, obviously, I, I didn't do everything when I started out, so I, I started, w with each new client, I would do a little bit, like I would do, try and do the incoming with them, and, the, and writing it down, and That's setting it, challenge, yeah, yeah, definitely, I, it, even some clients, like, uh, like the, well, like the client portal, like you, that's very new. Only that one client on that one. So I've done a lot of the other things up and, but the client portal is now new for me. So yeah, so there's always something new and always um, changing and optimizing systems. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that. 
slides. So uh, for, uh, for what specifically, what bit of the process? Okay, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what I used in the very beginning, what I started off with. So I always had some way of, I started off with MailChimp and then Aweber, so I had some way of uh, doing automation, sending emails to clients, um, then moved to ActiveCampaign because it's got that really nice tagging system and way to notify you, so, but yeah, so I'm, so that, and then the, the proposal software as well. I didn't start with better proposals, that's quite a new one now. I started off with BitSketch. But um, the, that made a huge difference. That's one of the first things I did is having a, have a proper proposal. I think that set it up nicely. I hated it. <laughs> I really hate Aweber. Every time I went into my email, I don't know why. It's, I, I've got no logical reason for you. I just didn't like it. I, I, I don't think it's actually Aweber. I think it's the time, the the, the time that I, I was doing a lot of online marketing stuff, and I really didn't like sending out those emails because it was a lot of affiliate emails and it wasn't so not me, and I really hated it. So I think it's it might be, <laughs> except that I also really think it's clunky and it, it didn't make it it didn't help me when I go do it, um, and it's not as good as Active Campaign, and I think it's more expensive. It just depends on the size of your list, though. But yeah, it was more expensive for me. <laughs> Anything else? Come on. <laughs> okay, cool. Just over an hour. Cool, thank you. <laughs> I've got to, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on local at the moment because I, I, I want to. I, I did do more international clients in the past, especially with the digital marketing, but I'm actually really trying to do more local. That's why my uh, sources at the moment is more, like I said, the referrals and the, um, the sales reps and stuff. So I'm not, and if I do Facebook marketing, because that's really actually the, like one of the main things, then I, I target local as well. I think, what are we going to do? Are we going to ha uh, have a post? Yeah, at the end of the camp, we'll have a list of all those free sources that we use on the available. Um, and you can go to the active campaign from there. Most speakers do, we have it on their website, but we will do it on, on the WordCamp campaign website as well, sharing those with all the speakers. Okay. Because I think, because I've Okay, cool. Okay, specifically, just tell me, so the tools probably and the resources, I can, if there's specific things that you want me to put up. I think even the way you set up that full account, I'm not quite sure exactly how you did that, so maybe some of how you got to what, what you're talking about. Okay, so cool. Uh, yeah, I was actually supposed to, to go into more detail about it, but yeah, <laughs> I was trying. Okay. Cool, yeah, yeah, I can give that whole critical client flow. <laughs> cool, anything else? <laughs> cool. Cool, thanks everyone. So there's a, a little bit of a gap until the next uh, session. Uh, I think the next session will be half past three. Let me just double check.